Welcome back. We've detected that you've moved the hard drives from a DS1525 Plus to a DS1825 Plus. You can migrate your data and settings to your new Synology NAS now. So I hit the Migrate button. Now, do you want to retain everything or do you want to reset it? Well, think about this carefully. The whole point of the migration is to retain everything, but who knows? Maybe you have other reasons, but we're going to just leave that alone and hit Next. Do you want to automatically download and install the latest DSM-722 from the Synology website? Yes, of course. Next. There's a beep. Okay, now it's ready for the login. And now we're logged in to this 1825. Now, what you'll notice here it says drive five is not on the Synology compatibility list, blah, blah, blah. This is all your new setup stuff, but it does still carry over all of the previous configuration, but still gives you sort of all the new info, the same old boilerplate nonsense that you would get from a brand new just configured NAS. If you look at the storage manager right now, okay, so Carrie, what if Synology makes it so the patch doesn't work? Well, then this would be the situation where your NAS still works, but you'll notice it's in a caution state. And here it's saying 31 terabytes are being used and 38 terabytes are available. So we've got a lot of stuff on here, but you see the migration kept everything. We haven't lost anything. And these drives would ordinarily be green as the NVMe drives display here, but we haven't created a storage pool. So what I need to do is run the script. If we go to our task manager, so just to show you how easy this is, here in the control panel, there's a, sorry, task scheduler right here. And right here it says drive compatibility, user defined script. We've already added the script. The script is, it's in our video notes. You copy and paste that and you create this. And when I hit, this button and choose run it's all done that's uh, this is what everybody's crying and whining about could you ask for that to be any easier let's go to our storage manager now give it a second everything's healthy everything's happy everything fully works 100 percent no problems but you might say what if you wanted to expand your array because i wasn't able to expand it or repair it if these drives appear in red. So let's try that right now. Let me come back over to camera one. So we're going to plug this in. It's still initializing drive six, so it's spinning it up and it's identifying it and it takes a minute, right? Just like when you turn the NAS on, it takes a couple minutes for it to uh, initialize. Part of that, here we go. The system detected a newly installed drive. Okay, great. So let me refresh. I guess the easiest way will just be to close and reopen the storage manager. Okay, so drive six shows it's green, but you'll notice it's got these diagonal lines, meaning it's kind of orphaned. So we want to expand our array with it. Under hard drives, these are our NVMe drives. This is disk six. Manage available drives. Add a drive for storage expansion, or do you want to replace a drive, or do you want to change your RAID type, or do you want to assign it as a hot spare? Do you want to create a whole nother storage pool, or do you want to create an SSD cache? Well, later, I do want to create the SS SSD cache. I'm not ready to do that yet. What I want to do is just add this drive to my, and extend and expand my current storage. Which one? Well, I only have one. <laughs> You'd think it'd be intelligent enough to not have to ask me this, but okay. Storage pool one, obviously. Which drive? Well, there's only one to pick. I don't know why it's not pre-selected. All right, your estimated capacity is going to be 90 terabytes after you do this. All right, great. Next. It says, this operation will expand the storage pool capacity resulted in unallocated space. If you plan on using it as a single volume, you can further allocate that capacity to volume one and extended. So yes, I want to expand the capacity of volume one. Okay, great, next. 
This is a, just a summary. This is what you're going to do. Yes, apply it. All the data on the newly added drive will be erased. Well, it's a brand new drive. So it's not erasing the data on the volume, only the data on the new drive we added. And since the new drive we added is new, it doesn't have any data. But if it used to, when I click OK, it isn't going to anymore. So don't let that freak you out. We're specifically talking about the drive, the added drive, not the volume. Okay, now what it's going to do is it's going to give us, we should see some sort of progress. This tells us drive six is healthy, it's happy. If it came up and said drive six wasn't compatible and wasn't going to let us do that, we just go back to the task scheduler, run that one more time. Anytime you change a drive, you might need to do that. But if you're not changing the drive and you're not modifying the NAS, you're just, you've got it configured and running, it should stay that way. And in, until such time as that should change in the future, I will let you know and update you. But for right now, that's it. It's just kind of a one-time deal. So if we look on volume one, what does it say here? There it is, adding drives, initializing. So right now it's formatting drive six and adding it to the RAID array. And then what it's gonna do is it's now going to split all of the shared parity data on the other five drives with drive six. And the data on drive six will be then shared in parity to each of the other five drives. So you can see on a 20 terabyte drive, it estimates it's gonna take 12 days. This estimation uh, will be quickly adjusted to, well, it says four days. It'll likely, in reality, from previous experience, take about three and a half days. So today's Sunday. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Monday will be one day. Tuesday will be day two. So probably about this time, mm, be a little bit later on Wednesday, Maybe by the late evening, it'll be done. And then that's it.